ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಟು ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಐ ಕ್ಯು ಐ ಆಮ್ ಶ್ರುತಿ ಬೆನ್ನೂರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಆನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಟು ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಕ್ಯೂ ಸೆಲ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಪೆನ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ಕೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆನ್ ವೇರಿಯಸ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪೆನ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ಕೋರ್ಸ್ ಆನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಸರ್ವಿಸ್ ಕಮಿಷನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಮೋರ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಲಾಗ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಆಫಿಷಿಯಲ್ ವೆಬ್ಸೈಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಐ ಕ್ಯೂ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಸಿ ಬಜೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೋಸೆಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಅ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ ಟು ಸ್ಪೆಂಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ಮನಿ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಅನ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇನ್ಕಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಂಡಿಚರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಸೆಟ್ ಪೀರಿಯಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೈಮ್ ವಾಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಯೂಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬಜೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಬಜೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಆಕ್ಸಲರೇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಎಕನಾಮಿಕ್ ಗ್ರೋತ್ ಇಟ್ ಹೆಲ್ಪ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ನೇಷನ್ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ಆರ್ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ಕಾನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ ಯೂನಿಯನ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ಲೋಕಸಭಾ ಬೈ ದ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಫಿನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಯೂಶಲಿ ಇನ್ ದ ಮಂತ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೆಬ್ರವರಿ ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ಬಜೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಇಸ್ ಡನ್ ಅಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಫಿನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ವಿಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ದ ಆ್ಯನ್ಯುವಲ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ನೌ ಚೀಫ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಆಫ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಎಚ್ ಡಿ ಕುಮಾರಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟೆಡ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಇಸ್ ಕೊಲಿಜನ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಬಜೆಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಪೇಜಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಯುಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ವಿಚ್ ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಪಿಂಚ್ ಯುವರ್ ಪಾಕೆಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಎಮ್ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದ ಫಿನಾನ್ಸ್ ಮಿನಿಸ್ಟರ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಮೆನಿ ನ್ಯೂ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅಲೋಕೇಟೆಡ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯೂಜ್ ಮನಿ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಪಾರ್ಟ್ಮೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಬ್ಯಾಲೆನ್ಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಂಡಿಚರ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟೆಡ್ ಟು ಬಿ ಟೂ ಲ್ಯಾಕ್ ತರ್ಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಒನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ತ್ರೀ ಕ್ರೋರ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಡಿಯೋ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸಿ ವಾಟ್ ನ್ಯೂ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹಿ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಟೇಕನ್ ಅಪ್ ಇನ್ ಈಚ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಮೇಜರ್ ಇರಿಗೇಷನ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಎಜುಕೇಷನ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸಿಟಿ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಎಕಾಲಜಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನ್ವಿರಾನ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ನ್ಯೂ ಟ್ಯಾಕ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸಲ್ಸ್ ಲೆಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಅಗ್ರಿಕಲ್ಚರ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ chief minister has proposed a financial support for zero budget farming and organic farming in this year budget he has announced a grant of rupees 40 crores to zero budget farming and rupees 35 crores for organic farming scheme now what is this zero budget farming and how is it different from organic farming zero budget farming see the name itself says that here the cost of production is almost zero see if you observe wild fruit trees grown in the forests like wild mango tree wild tamarind gooseberry jackfruit jamun these trees bear unusual fruits in summer season and these trees never miss flowering in fruiting season they produce large quantity of fruits every year and these are the summer delights for all the wild animals or birds insect that live in that area have you ever wondered who looks after these trees who is providing them the fertilizers there is no farmer to to sp- spray pesticides to keep them safe from the pests and diseases who is irrigating the land there there is no one to maintain these plants but still these trees are giving large quantity of good quality fruits every year who is looking after all these plants there the answer is nature nature does everything and natural farming is the system where laws of nature are applied to agricultural practices this is zero budget natural farming here nature looks after everything zero budget natural farming is a farming practice that believes in natural growth of crops without adding any fertilizers and pesticides or any other foreign element nowadays this zero budget natural farming is gaining more importance to improve the quality of agriculture product and this is very much different from organic farming in organic farming organic fertilizers and manures like compost vermi compost or cow dung manure these are applied to the farm land zero budget natural farming even the vermi compost cow dung manure is also not applied but the similarity between this zero budget natural farming and organic farming is that both are chemical free both farming methods encourage the farmers to use local breeds of seeds native varieties of vegetables or grains pulses and other crops
This is extremely low. Zero budget natural farming is extremely low cost farming. But organic farming is still expensive due to the requirement of bulk manures. Now here is one question. What is the name of an Indian agriculturist who won Padma Shri award for his contribution in zero budget natural farming? Here are the options. Suhas Gaonkar, Subhash Palekar, Sachin Agni, Sriram Gowda. Please pause the video and try to answer this question. I feel very honored to introduce this great personality. He is Mr. Subhash Palekar. He is an Indian agriculturist who practiced and wrote many books about natural farming. His native place is Maharashtra. See, he is supporting many states including Karnataka state in implementing zero budget natural farming. And he is not doing this for money. He is not taking a single penny to implement this project. He is freely suggesting various governments. And Karnataka state is the third state to implement this zero budget natural farming after Himachal Pradesh and Andhra Pradesh. See, already in Andhra Pradesh, 3 lakh farmers have been benefited by this natural farming. Let's hope that this initiative brings cheers to the Karnataka state farmers as well. See, Subhash Palekar says that by adopting this zero budget natural farming, crops can be grown even in drought prone areas, even where there is water scarcity. Many agriculture universities and chemical fertilizer companies say that crops cannot be grown without external supplements. And many farmers take agriculture loans to purchase fertilizers, pesticides from the market and still suffer from crop failure. And it may also lead to farmer suicide. Many state governments, including Karnataka state government, waiver the loans of the farmers in such situation. But that is not the permanent solution. Loan wavering is not the permanent solution. We should liberate our farmers from the loans. We should adopt such agriculture methodologies where cost of production is reduced. Still we get good yield and environmental friendly methodology should be adopted. Right. Now HD Kumaraswamy has granted rupees 40 crores to this zero budget natural farming and rupees 35 crores for organic farming scheme. Adding to this, Chief Minister also announced Grading of organic and zero budget farm produce. Encouragement to grading and packaging and branding units. So what is this grading? Grading means based on the size, shape or based on the weight of the fruit. Agriculture products are separated into groups and then they are sent to the market. You can see in this image, this is apple grading machine. So grading of organic and zero budget farm produce, encouragement to grading and packaging and branding units, 50% subsidy to eligible entrepreneurs and startup entrepreneurs with a grant of rupees 2 crores. Now here is one question. Karnataka government has implemented Israel's advanced technology. Which among the following is true about this initiative? Sensors will be linked to water system and they will decide and provide the required quantity of water based on the type of the crop. This increases agriculture productivity. To monitor the progress of these programs, budget has also proposed to constitute high level agriculture coordination committee led by the chief minister. And fourth option is all the above. Answer to this question is all the above. We are adopting Israel's advanced technology mainly to reduce the water wastage. The Israel model farming scheme was implemented in Karnataka last year that is in 2018 itself. Here drip irrigation methods are used to conserve the water. To know more about this Israel model of farming please watch June 2018 Karnataka current affairs video prepared by me in study EQ channel. June 2018 Karnataka State Current Affair. There I have covered in detail about this Israel model farming. And this year, in 2019 budget, CM has granted rupees 145 crore to Israel model farming scheme. And a grant of rupees 250 crores to Krishi Bhagya scheme. Krishi Bhagya scheme was launched in 2014. This particular scheme, Krishi Bhagya scheme, aims at securing farmers' income by taking up on-farm rainwater conservation practices. 
it also encourages the farmers to adopt modern technologies for efficient use of water this third point is very important for exam direct cash transfer to millet growers to encourage millet farming with cash incentive of rupees 10000 per hectare under raita siri scheme with a grant of rupees 10 crore see under this raita siri scheme millet farming is encouraged with cash incentive of rupees 10000 per hectare please remember this point this is very very important for the exam see these are the millet crops ragi is also one of the millet crop these crop require less water now why to encourage millet farming in karnataka see many parts of karnataka state are drought prone and failing rain affects the agriculture productivity and farmers also suffer huge loss so in order to stabilize farmers income and to promote effective water management and to promote consumer health millet farming is encouraged under raita siri scheme 10000 rupees per hectare cash incentive is also given under this raita siri scheme so for that in karnataka budget 2019 cm has granted 10 crore rupees a grant of rupees 5 crore to encourage country chicken poultry farming for 10000 unemployed poor youth see country chicken poultry farming means naati koli sakanike in kannada this country chicken or naati koli it refers to indigenous breed or local breed which are raised in villages of india for centuries and this country chicken is rich in proteins it is also high in cholesterol it provides selenium which contains antioxidants and it improves your immune system now the government has granted 5 crore to encourage country chicken poultry farming this helps poor rural youth especially next is cooperative department has established debt relief commission in karnataka after kerala model see debt means sala in kannada debt relief commission in karnataka after kerala model this is mainly to reduce the number of farmers suicide okay till now we studied about the budget allocation in agriculture sector by karnataka state government in this 2019 budget in this sector we studied about the country chicken poultry farming debt relief commission israel model of farming zero budget natural farming organic farming krishi bhagya scheme raita siri scheme now let's move to the next sector that is major irrigation projects see major irrigation schemes are those schemes which have a culturable command areas of more than 10000 hectare can these projects are planned by the government for various purposes like irrigation purpose hydro power generation water supply for drinking purpose industrial purpose flood control navigation for these various purposes government take up major irrigation projects now the government has granted rupees 1563 crore for lift irrigation projects what is this lift irrigation please observe the images lift irrigation is a method of irrigation in which water is not transported by natural flow that is not by the gravity but here the water is lifted with pumps or surge pools this is lift irrigation and government has granted rupees 1563 crore rupees for lift irrigation projects next allocation is for tank filling projects kere tumbuva yojanegalu rupees 1680 crore for tank filling projects and rupees 445 crore for comprehensive tank development works and rupees 477 crore for micro irrigation projects micro irrigation means frequent application of small quantities of water directly above and below the soil surface you can observe this image this is of drip irrigation here water is applied to the plant drop by drop such methods conserves water this is micro irrigation and government has allocated rupees 477 crore for micro irrigation projects here is one question what percentage of water can be conserved by adopting drip irrigation methods in agriculture option a 65% option b more than 90% option c 50% and option d 20% please write your answer in comment box next rupees 860 crore rupees 
for canal modernization development works this is canal so canal modernization means improving its existing water infrastructure to meet long term needs for safe reliable and cost effective conveyance rupees 160 crore for the construction of bridge and barrages please observe this image this is barrage barrage is a structure built over a river this is mainly to control the flow of water with the help of gates and this is the bridge so 160 crore for the construction of bridge and barrages and 506 crore for the infrastructure development works next allocation is for manchinabele reservoir so this is manchinabele reservoir manchinabele is the name of the village in magdi taluk in ramnagar district of karnataka manchinabele it is 40 kilometers away from bengaluru city and this particular dam was built for irrigation purposes now it also provides water to magdi town and this dam is built across river arkavati manchinabele reservoir this particular dam is built across river arkavati please observe the image and the land which is covered for irrigation under this project is called tore salu tore salu is a kannada word because all the villages come on the two sides of river arkavati that is why it is called as tore salu in kannada tore means river and salu means line and this place is good for weekend outings also now the state government has allocated 125 crore rupees for manchinabele reservoir downstream garden development and for development of tourism activities rupees 75 crore for rejuvenation works of harangi reservoir and river basin works this is harangi reservoir harangi reservoir is located near hudgur village somvarpet taluk in kodugu district of karnataka okay. we understood about the budget allocation for major irrigation projects in karnataka state we studied about lift irrigation project tank filling project micro irrigation project like drip irrigation and canal modernization construction of bridge and barrages manchinabele reservoir and allocation for this harangi reservoir also let's move to the next sector that is forest environment and ecology so karnataka is the home of india's largest elephant population with more than 6000 jumbos growing human population has resulted in encroachment of elephant habitat and this is the main cause for human elephant conflict encroachment of the elephant habitat by human beings is the main cause for human elephant conflict elephant deaths are also reported due to electric fences these rail barriers help in preventing human elephant conflict so the government has granted rupees 100 crore to control human elephant conflict by constructing rail track barriers under the project prevention of human elephant conflict by used rail barriers grant of 60 crore rupees to karnataka state pollution control board for development of 21 district laboratories 16 sub laboratories and for purchase of 10 automated flow analyzers and grant of rupees 2 crore to climatic change strategic knowledge center under empri empri stands for environmental management and policy research institute this climatic change strategic knowledge center under empri will take up a research and study relating to climate change okay, let's move to the next sector that is education sector government is planning to modernize the infrastructure in schools construction of 1500 new classrooms and upgradation of 5000 classrooms where they provide proper desks whiteboards projectors that is virtual classroom and distribution of learning equipment to 1000 schools and appointment of one estate manager for the maintenance of school building karnataka government is planning to provide education under one roof from pre primary level to the class 12 till 12th class under one roof so it is establishing 1000 karnataka public schools in the next 4 years in hobli headquarters and separate organization and guidelines on kendriya vidyalaya model you have heard about kendriya vidyalaya schools action to make ct examination conducted by karnataka examination development authority 
online ct exams will be online now we understood how the government is spending money to improve the education sector and the education sector government is spending money to modernize the school infrastructure so it is appointing one estate manager for the maintenance of school buildings and also it is establishing karnataka public schools in hobli headquarters these karnataka public schools provide education under one roof from pre primary level till class 12 and from now the cd exam common entrance test will be online let's move to the next sector that is health sector here is one question ayushman bharat yojana or pradhan mantri jan arogya yojana or national health protection scheme or modi care it's a centrally sponsored scheme launched in which year 2017 2018 2016 Please pause the video and try to answer. Answer is 2018. Under the integrated scheme Ayushman Bharat Aarogya Kara Karnataka financial assistance for BPL beneficiaries below poverty line BPL beneficiaries is 5 lakh per year 1.5 lakh per family per year 10 lakh per family per year or 2 lakh per family per year ayushman bharat it's a central government scheme and arogya kara karnataka is state government scheme both of these schemes have been integrated into one because both schemes have same objectives now the question is under integrated ayushman bharat arogya kara scheme financial assistance for bpl beneficiaries the answer is 5 lakh rupees per family per year this is for the bpl beneficiaries and for the apl beneficiaries that is above poverty line for these apl families financial assistance will be up to 1.5 lakh per family per year rupees 1.5 lakh per family per year is for the apl families and for the bpl beneficiaries 5 lakh rupees per family per year this is very important please remember now in this 2019 karnataka state annual budget state is spending rupees 950 crore for ayushman bharat arogya kara karnataka scheme and central government has released rupees 409 crore for this year 2019 2020 and next point is here see in karnataka there is a shortage of specialists to ameliorate the shortage government is establishing dnb centers what is this dnb dnb stands for diplomat in national board it's a post graduate degree and this post graduate degree is awarded by national board of examination this national board of examination comes under union ministry of health india okay this dnb post graduate degree is equivalent to md or ms md or ms candidates are trained at medical colleges but dnb candidates are trained at big private hospitals this is the difference dnb stands for diplomat in national board and it's a post graduate degree which is equivalent to md or ms now the state government is investing state government has granted rupees 2 crore to establish dnb centers at 11 selected districts and taluk hospitals this is mainly to ameliorate the shortage of specialists in the state sports injury and robotic surgery please observe this image this is robotic surgery it's an advanced technology the government has grant rupees 10 crore for the establishment of this sports injury and robotic surgery facility at sanjay gandhi institute of trauma and orthopedics which is located at bengaluru next is mammogram and pap smear scanning facility see this mammogram and pap smear scanning center this can spot cancer before any other symptoms have developed means this is mainly for the cancer diagnosis state government has granted rupees 10 crore to establish this mammogram and pap smear scanning facility in 10 districts those 10 districts are 
ಮಂಗಳೂರು ತುಮಕೂರು ವಿಜಯಪುರ ಚಿತ್ರದುರ್ಗ ದಾವಣಗೆರೆ ಬಾಗಲಕೋಟೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕಮಗಳೂರು ಹಾವೇರಿ ಕೋಲಾರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ ಡಿಸ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ದ ಪ್ಲಾನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಹೆಲ್ತ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಆಲೋಕೇಟೆಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ನೈನ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಫಾರ್ ಆಯುಷ್ಮಾನ್ ಭಾರತ್ ಆರೋಗ್ಯಕರ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಸೆಂಟ್ರಲ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ರಿಲೀಸ್ಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಟೂ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಿ ಎನ್ ಬಿ ಸೆಂಟರ್ಸ್ ಮೇನ್ಲಿ ಟು ಆಮ್ಯುಲೇಟ್ ದ ಶಾರ್ಟೇಜ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲಿಸ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಟೆನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಇಂಜುರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರೋಬೋಟಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ಜರಿ ಅಟ್ ಸಂಜಯ್ ಗಾಂಧಿ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟ್ರೋಮಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆರ್ಥೋಪೆಡಿಕ್ಸ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಗ್ಳೂರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಟ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಅ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾನ್ ಟು ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಯಾಪ್ ಸ್ಮಿಯರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ಯಾನಿಂಗ್ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೀಸ್ ಅಟ್ ದ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ನಾವು ಲೆಟ್ಸ್ ಮೂವ್ ಟು ದ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಆಲೋಕೇಶನ್ ಟು ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸಿಟಿ ವಿಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಪಿಟಲ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಸಿ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಇಸ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಫಾಸ್ಟೆಸ್ಟ್ ಗ್ರೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸಿಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಫೇಸಿಂಗ್ ಮೆನಿ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ಸ್ ಸಚ್ ಆಸ್ ಡ್ರಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ವಾಟರ್ ವೋಸ್ ಆರ್ ಗಾರ್ಬೇಜ್ ಬ್ಯಾಡ್ ರೋಡ್ಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಏಮ್ಸ್ ಟು ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಫಾರ್ಮ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಇನ್ ಟು ಅ ಗ್ಲೋಬಲ್ ಸಿಟಿ ಸೊ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಲಯನ್ಸ್ ಶೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ದೆರ್ ಆರ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ವಿಚ್ ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಒನ್ ಸಚ್ ಪ್ರಾಜೆಕ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸಿಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಸಿ ದ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಆಫ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸಿಟಿ ಇಸ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ವೋವ್ ಟು ಟ್ಯಾಕಲ್ ದಿಸ್ ಟ್ರಾಫಿಕ್ ಪ್ರಾಬ್ಲಮ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಸಿಟಿ ಮೊಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಸಿ ದಿಸ್ ಪರ್ಟಿಕ್ಯುಲರ್ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಗಿವ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರಯಾರಿಟಿ ಫಾರ್ ಪಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಟ್ರಾನ್ಸ್ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಮೊಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಪ್ಲ್ಯಾನ್ಸ್ ಟು ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟ್ ಮೆಟ್ರೋ ವಿತ್ ಬಿ ಎಮ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಬಿ ಎಮ್ ಟಿ ಸಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೆಟ್ರೋ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ಇಂಟಿಗ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಇಸ್ ಅಮಂಗ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅಡಾಪ್ಟ್ ಕಾಂಪ್ರೆಹೆನ್ಸಿವ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಪಾಲಿಸಿ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ಬಜೆಟ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ಸೆಟಿಂಗ್ ಅಪ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಲೆಕ್ಟ್ರಿಕ್ ವೆಹಿಕಲ್ಸ್ ಚಾರ್ಜಿಂಗ್ ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ಟೆನ್ ಮೆಟ್ರೋ ಸ್ಟೇಷನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸಿಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಬಿ ದ ಪಾರ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೊಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಮೊಬಿಲಿಟಿ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ ಡೆವಲಪ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಪೆಡೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯನ್ ರೋಡ್ ಸಿ ಪೆಡೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯನ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಪರ್ಸನ್ ಹೂ ವಾಕ್ ಆನ್ ಫೂಟ್ ಅಟ್ಲೀಸ್ಟ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಪೆಡೆಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯನ್ ರೋಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಪ್ಲಿಮೆಂಟೇಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ನವ ಬೆಂಗಳೂರು ಕ್ರಿಯಾ ಯೋಜನೆ ಅಟ್ ಆನ್ ಎಸ್ಟಿಮೇಟೆಡ್ ಕಾಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ರುಪೀಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಇಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ನ್ಯೂಸ್ ಔಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಏಟ್ ಥೌಸಂಡ್ ಫಿಫ್ಟೀನ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಕ್ರೋರ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀನ್ ಗ್ರಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಟೂ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಪೋಸ್ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಬೆಂಗಳೂ
outer suburbs beyond 15 kilometers area and it draws large number of commuters or the passengers who travel on daily basis this is suburban rail see the point here is few changes have been included in suburban rail project by making some changes in suburban rail policy 2018 so a special purpose vehicle with the name bengaluru rail infrastructure development entity will be established grant of rupees 1000 crore to construct elevated corridor in the year 2019 2020 converting 5 lakh road lights in bengaluru into led now why led lights so this is fluorescent light and here is incandescent light these lights consume more energy most of the energy is wasted as heat here and here is led led stands for liquid crystal display these led lights save electricity up to 85% in case of led lights 95% of the energy is converted into light only 5% is wasted as heat so led lights are more energy efficient that is why government is spending money to convert 5 lakh road lights in bengaluru into led karnataka state government is establishing 400 metric ton capacity solid waste processing unit through kpcl under public private partnership ppp government decided to go ahead with elevated corridor that is heightened roads elevated corridor see activists are against this move of the government because project estimated cost is rupees 25000 crore activists say that this is not development by any logical definition rupees 25000 crore is a huge amount to be spent on this road infrastructure and continuous construction of new roads is not going to solve the problem of traffic in bangalore activists say that move people not the vehicles and if government provides viable public transport options for people to go from one place to another and make it more comfortable they will take it happily now many are compelled to use the private vehicles that is why the number of vehicles has increased in bengaluru city now and this has led to the traffic problems and similarly if car ownership and maintenance becomes expensive people tend to use less cars less private vehicles if it becomes more uh, expensive and bengaluru roads resemble a parking lot most of the day this is not because there are not enough roads but because the share of public transport is not good enough there are too many private vehicles and very less buses or public transport system instead of spending huge money on road construction government should increase the number of bmtc buses this is going to solve the problem so this is commercial street bengaluru and this is brigade road in bengaluru and these two roads brigade road commercial street are known for their vehicle density there is more traffic here but now the chief minister wants to make them vehicle free he has proposed an action to convert commercial street and brigade road no vehicles on brigade road and commercial street in bengaluru there is a traffic problem and parking vehicles is also problematic there is a policy called parking rules and implementation policy now the government has taken up an action plan to park 10000 vehicles on 87 selected smart parking systems what is the smart parking system please observe this image smart vehicle parking system it's a system which helps the drivers to find vacant spot to park their vehicles in each parking space there will be a sensor these sensors help the driver to find the vacant spot so that drivers can park their vehicle there smart parking system uses sensing devices like camera vehicle counting equipment sensors installed in the pavements all these equipments determine the occupancy of parking lot and this smart parking system increases the availability of parking it prevents the drivers from spending too much time searching for a parking space
This is smart parking. This is very important. Kaveri water for all. Chief Minister has announced a grant of rupees 500 crore in Karnataka budget 2019-2020 for the work of fifth stage Kaveri water supply scheme. See, once this scheme, Kaveri water supply scheme is implemented, water woes or water problem of the city is expected to get solved. This particular scheme aims to supply 775 million litres of water per day to the city. 775 million litres of water per day to the city. And at least 110 villages spread across the peripheral areas of the city. Outside these, this particular city will be benefited from this particular project. And this particular project is expected to be completed by 2023. Please remember this year. Kaveri water supply scheme is expected to be completed by 2023. See, I have already explained about this suburban rail. HD Kumaraswamy has proposed implementing highly ambitious suburban rail services in Bengaluru at the total estimated cost of rupees 23,093 crore. And this particular service, suburban rail service, is popularly called as commuter train. What is commuter? Commuter is a person who travels some distance to work on a regular basis. And here are some other commuter friendly initiatives taken up by the Karnataka state government. Commuters card for metro and BMTC services. One card will be given to the commuters so that they can travel in metro rails and also in BMTC buses using that card. Converting three coach into six coaches of 50 rail sets. Charging facility to two-wheeler electric vehicles in selected 10 metro stations. Small capacity buses from BMTC in 10 selected metro stations to provide last mile connectivity. These are the other commuter friendly initiatives. Let's move to the next sector that is tax proposal. Here you are seeing an image of beer. Beer is one of the commonly consumed drink. Once this Karnataka annual budget 2019 is approved, beer expected to become more costly because state government has increased the excise tax, additional excise duty on beer from 150% to 175%. Excise duty on beer manufactured in micro bravery Micro brewery, brewery means it is the place where beer is commercially made. That place is called as brewery. Excise duty on beer manufactured in micro brewery from existing rupees 5 per BL to rupees 10 per BL and additional excise duty from existing rupees 12.50 per BL to 25 rupees per BL. An increase in duty of low alcoholic beverages also from existing rupees 5 per BL to rupees 10 per BL and additional excise duty from 122% to 150%. See, low alcoholic beverages means beverage that contains less than one point, uh, sorry, 0.5% of alcohol by volume. The beverages that contain less than 0.5% of alcohol by volume are called low alcoholic beverages see under the head of gst that is goods and service tax revenue collection target is 66920 crore rupees for the current year 2019-2020 okay this is the target under the head of gst and revenue collection target from commercial tax department for this year is rupees 76046 crore what is in store for the startups how the government is going to help startups this year see in agriculture sector 50% subsidy will be given to the eligible entrepreneurs and startup with a grant of rupees 2 crore Helping of startups in Bengaluru city area by strengthening the incubation center. Incubation center. Incubation center provides an environment for startups to develop 
by providing some services like management training and office space. Incubation centers or startup incubators are usually non-profit organizations. And third point is action to set up infonomics in Department of Public Administration and Reforms for providing required information to the startups and agencies at an appropriate cost. Since simple terms, infonomics means economics of information. Infonomics is the social science. It involves studying the production of information and consumption of information and the transfer of money to produce that information, to sell that information or to obtain that information. Infonomics is the economics of information. Government is planning to set up infonomics in Department of Public Administration and Reforms for providing required information to the startups and agencies at an appropriate cost. Then startups can get information from Department of Public Administration by paying certain amount, appropriate cost. It can get all the information. Thank you. All the best.